guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale and I have one of my OG favorite guests back on the channel, the German pro from SK Gaming. It's none other than Flobby. Flobby, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey guys, thanks for inviting me again. Yeah, I'm great. And you? Good. Glad to hear it. You, you're happy to be back home. What was your overall experience in CRL and living in uh, LA? It was definitely a really great experience also with my teammates and yeah, everything that happened, it was definitely a nice experience and still I'm pretty happy to be home and yeah yeah well awesome man well you're back home and you're already at it again on ladder just dominating with golem decks and today it's, i can just feel it's going to be a really great video because we're really going to kind of get down to the finer points of golem because i've had a billion golem videos here on the channel but i really want to get into the crux of what makes a guy like Flobby or Royal top golem player. So today we're going to actually review some replays. We're going to play a live ladder match. And like I said, we're really going to get into the, the weeds of golem strategy. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So Flobby, I'm going to put on a replay here. Not We're really going to break down these first two against Fars and uh, Face Control. But I want to show this one against Galad on the background. And while we watch this one... I want you to kind of break it down. Let's start with the difference between really in my mind, especially on ladder, there's you and there's Royal. So what are the differences between your two Golem style uh, gameplay? Um, yeah, I think uh, the main difference between Royal and me is that Royal is playing a bit more defensive with Golem. Um, when I see him playing, he's oftentimes waiting. Um, even if he's full elixir with cards playing instead of me like just dropping a mega minion if i have like one elixir advantage he's just waiting and just uh yeah reacting to the enemy so i would say his playstyle is a bit more defensive than mine okay but uh, um yeah and in general he's playing really 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 good he's nearly doing like no mistake and yeah that's why he also finished really high the last seasons and for example for example i did last season so yeah Roy yeah. is def in my opinion, Roy is the best golem player in the world right now. Wow, that, that's very of, humble like, of you too, because when I had Royal on, not the last time, but the time before that, he said that you basically taught him everything he knows about golems, so it's cool to see you guys compliment each other like that. And it's cool to hear the differences between your play styles. Now, I also wanted to ask you, let's let's kind of trickle down here. So what's the difference between you and Royal, and then like the next tier of maybe top ladder golem players but it feels to me, and I said this off air too, Flobby, that you and Royal, like, if if you or if you're in the mood, you guys have no problem just pushing the top ten ladder. Like, it's it's for you guys, it's not even a big deal any time of the season. Let's talk about yeah. you in the next tier of players, maybe like top thousand or top ten thousand ladder players. Like, what are the difference between you guys and those guys, in your opinion? It's definitely a really interesting question. Um, I can't say it hundred percent, but. There are like some points. For example, one point is for me is motivation. You really need to motivate yourself if you play, um, because if you're motivated, you're also more concentrated and you can focus better on your game. And also, we like Royal and me also played Golden for a really long time. So, I in some situations I don't even think about what to play. I just play because I know what to do. So that's also one point. And um, yeah, maybe it's also just like. Um, no, 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 I get it. I have a follow-up question because I, okay, so I am an all right golem player in terms of compared to the other archetypes in the game, the other decks in the game, but my issue is that I just can never, you know, I can't get to the level that you guys can. Obviously, I'm not the player that you guys are, right? But I think that there's, I, I often ask myself, like, am I doing something wrong? Am I, am I just bad at certain matchups? So for you, if you were going to recommend maybe just like a, a blanket, uh, all all advice, all encompassing advice to get better at Golem, do you think it'd be best to just practice matchups or learn each mat deck matchup? Or is it more just learning the deck in general? Like if, you know, just give me a few basic steps to get better at Golem that are relatively universal. Yeah, I think it's a mix. First, you should maybe watch some games from other pros, like for example, watching Royal or maybe me, I don't know. Um, just watch some games, like get some tips, get some plays you maybe didn't see before. Then the most important part, of course, play yourself, test the decks, play it yourself and uh, do the plays and um, try to get better. And if there's something missing in your play style, then maybe go back to watching again, maybe some tips also from other uh, players and try to like change your play style because at some point you have like a specific game or a play style and um, it's hard to change that. So you need to try to like change something because 
um, yeah, you need to do something different and maybe you can find out in like videos or streams from other players. Okay, that's good advice. Uh, you want to go ahead and do a live ladder match now? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, cool. So while you're searching, let me ask you a follow-up question. So when you say change things up, maybe give me an example of something that I could change up. You know, obviously you haven't seen me play in a while, but just, you know, for example, give me some examples of what a player might want to change up to uh, to switch things up. Yeah, for example, I don't know, dropping the golem is an important thing for uh, players who didn't play golem uh, for a long time. Maybe they drop golem in uh, wrong situations or they have like in single elixir, they are so afraid of playing a golem that they wait until they have like, I don't know, like they wait to double elixir instead of dropping it when you have five elixir advantage. Because if you're in a big elixir advantage, you should definitely drop it. Oh, I'm playing against red. Oh my god, red rooms. Okay, what is he what did you know what he's playing? Um... Probably Expo, I don't know. He's okay. also ultimate champion. If, if I if I win, oh my god, no, he's playing Barpart. Uh -oh, oh, that is three muskets, that is, maybe. Okay, what? Yeah, that is one of the decks which is kind of, for me, impossible to win. This is one ah! of the okay. This is one of the decks which I played the last days, also in my streams, um, against, and I nearly lost all the games because Barpart three muskets is a really hard, difficult matchup. But yeah, let's see. Maybe okay, I can yeah, let's something. let's see how you do here. And we do have lightning in this deck. I should note. We didn't even look at the deck, but you guys can see it in the uh, deck slot below. But uh, do you prefer lightning in all golem decks right now, Flobby, as opposed to poison or pump or whatever? Um, yeah, okay. lightning is really strong because of the e dragon. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I mean, poison is obviously also good, but he's not that strong against. Um, uh, poison is not that strong against Edric yet. What if people are like in mid level ladder and they're not going against these max E drags or, or many E drags at all? Would you sub poison back in probably? Um, I'll let you deal with this push first. <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, there, there you see it. Like, that's yeah. why it is really hard. He can pressure me with the three musketeers. I need to lightning, and then he has such a big elixir advantage. And I lose my tower at like 130 without really doing a mistake. That's. That's like the problem in this matchup, but let's see, maybe I can come back. Yeah. In a matchup like this, I imagine... Oh, back to the question. Would you sub in Poison? Sorry, in like the mid-level ladder matches? Um, yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Poison's definitely a good spell, but yeah, it's, it's just because of E-Ring. But in like lower ladder, maybe there are not that many E-Rings, so maybe it would mm -hmm. be better. So yeah. Okay, so definitely just test, definitely them, out. test them out, guys. See what, see what works better for you. Uh, so yeah, here exactly. we go. Golem... Now, in that situation, are you always going go? Why do you place Golem into the right lane instead of the left? Are you always want to go because, the same lane as the Barbarians? Um, yeah, uh, no, more important is that I go in the same lane where um, my last tower is, so that he can't pressure the other tower, and even if I would take his tower, I can't win anymore. Perfect. So I definitely always go in, in, the, in the lane where my tower is alive. My, my gotcha. tower is. Oh my god, oh my god. Wow, you actually get to the tower with... Oh my word! Wow, that was crazy, man. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. I, I didn't even see how you got that down. <laughs> okay, if he play through Musketeer in the middle, I need to... Okay, he's not. Yeah, we'll play Bopper. Okay. Oh my god, I actually have a chance to win this. Crazy. Yeah, yeah you do. Okay, so big push coming. You have Lightning... Yes, but I want lightning in this situation. Interesting. Okay. I will just try to take uh, the three musketeers down with my backup because I need wow. this backup. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is so cool because I would always lightning like an idiot in that situation. Ah, uh, the ice wizard was not that good. Yeah, you kind of thought that the, the. I thought too that that golem would or that push would last a little bit longer there, but here we go. I thought you would maybe go aggressive with the battle ram. That's mm -hmm. why I played the lumberjack in this situation. So here we go. Okay. So this is Same. interesting kind of situation here. You know he has three muskies in hand. It's kind of... <laughs> are you just cycling? You want him to make the first play here? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely interesting. He's going for the three thrones. I'm going to lightning here because this is a bit Big push, too much. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a hurts. lot of damage. No, the rage. It's enough. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, so close there. I thought you might have had it. <laughs> but still, it was a really good game because, yeah. I mean, at least I had like a little comeback. And yeah, like I said, this matchup is really, really hard because 
against the three musketeers and the bar parts you kind of need to lighting but you also need the backup so i always try to kill it with my backup but he if he really like defends well his three musketeers it's really hard for me yeah and this is the deck by the way that he was he was playing there guys uh not the e-drag version but the this one right here i'll put it on my deck slot and uh you think if you had poison or fireball in that matchup then maybe you would have been able to it, it would have been easier because you would have had two extra elixir yeah, I think Poison of Fireball would be definitely better in this in matchup. In that matchup, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, well, that was actually a really good match anyway. Do you want to go ahead and break down these replays? Or yeah. maybe do a, I can do a live or you can do a live at the end of the video? Yeah, sure. All right, sounds good. Want to start with the Fars Attack one? Yeah. All right, I'll press play in three, two, one, play. And yeah, just kind of break down this matchup and, and really focus on like the nuance and the micro decisions. If you need to pause, uh, feel free to do so. I do want to give a huge shout out to Fars Attack, who is a YouTuber, I believe a, uh, a French YouTuber or Italian? I think French. I oh, mean, well, he's it's French, Nova French, Nova French Army, Army right? <laughs> French, of course. Yeah. All right, yeah, but he's a really good guy. I actually had dinner with him uh, in London. Anyway, back to the matchup. So I start with a bubble. It's definitely something you can do at the start. That's why what's also difference between me and Roy. Like I am more aggressive. He probably would have waited still. Okay. So I knew at this point he's probably playing Pekka because he had Ghost and uh, a Wizard. And at this point I just play defensive. Like um, I just try to defend defend his pushes until I have like a good situation. Okay. Now, when you say good situation, I, am me I, I assume you mean a good situation to drop your first golem. Now, would that normally be when the win condition or the P.E.K.K.A. in this case is, is out of hand? Is that what you're looking for? Or does it not, like, what, what are the key indicators on when to drop your first golem? The key indicator is Elixir. It's, okay. not, uh, it's, it's not the P.E.K.K.A. The P.E.K.K.A. can be in cycle, that's no problem. It's more Elixir. Like, if I have a feeling that I have, like, three, four, five Elixir advantage or something, um, and right now, um, yeah, I thought about maybe dropping Golem, but then I saw he has same elixir, so it was not a good idea. So I played Ice Wizard in the back, and yeah, okay, played more or started playing more defensive. Against which matchups do you find yourself dropping a bunch of support cards, kind of like what you're doing now, and then drop Golem at bridge in front of your support cards? Like, when does that? How often and when does that happen? It happens sometimes. Um, it depends. For example, if I have Golem versus Golem, sometimes when I drop a Mega Minion and the enemy drops a Mega Minion, I tank my, uh, like my Mega Minion, uh, and then I have Golem Mega Minion against uh, like him without having Mega Minion in cycle. That sometimes uh, then I have a really good situation. That sometimes when I do it, or sometimes sometimes against Mortar when he's dropping Rascals in the back, then I drop an E Dragon in the back, and then, then sometimes I also drop a Golem in front, but. It's not something I do really often. It's okay. more that I drop a golem in the back when I have an elixir advantage. Okay, okay. Sounds For example, good. right now, yep. he poisoned and I still have something on the field. So I um, played the golem, even if I had not that much elixir advantage, because now it was double elixir. And then, uh, like, it's time for my first golem. Then I saw he's pushing the other lane, so I wanted to defend pretty... With pretty, not, uh, like, with not that much elixir, so I just made NATO ice with and got some damage. So they had, like, my air support on the right. Okay, perfect. And if I can just pause for one second here, around like 15 seconds or so, uh, I want to ask you in, in that situation, because that was something that happens obviously a lot in a golem match, and everybody says the same thing, Flobby, is when you're playing golem, you have to be comfortable using your tower's uh, hit points as a resource, right? So you, being comfortable taking a lot of damage. But obviously you are going to be defending, just like you did opposite lane there with the Ice Wiz, the NATO, and later the Goblin Barrel. I mean, excuse me, the Barbarian Barrel. So what is your rule of thumb in terms of how much damage you're willing to take? I know a lot of it's situational depending on the match, but do you have any kind of indicator on, okay, I'm okay giving up a thousand damage there? It depends. I mean... If I know I will take his tower with this push, I can take nearly the whole tower, but not the whole tower. Like okay. then I could be it could be like to 15 HP if I know I will take the tower and it's it's done then. But okay. um, in general, in this situation, I, situation I couldn't take that much that much damage because uh, battle ram uh, goblin gang would have taken my tower. Mm -hmm. So I definitely needed to defend it. And yeah. Okay. Now Let's um press play now again. Okay. Um, and now um, you probably saw it. Um, I played uh, real defensive. He played uh, Battle Ram in the back. Then I dropped the Lumberjack in the same lane, and I defended and then used the defense for the offense. That's what you what you just talked about. Yeah. So I dropped the Golem okay, so in it's front. Right here. Okay. Because I, I I just pressed play again. So I'm at like I just entered into double excuse me to sudden death overtime right now. 
Yeah. Okay. okay perfect. Because they they are gonna see it. Because um, first he had a big advantage in in the damage. So I realized, yeah, I need to defend. If I will go with the golem, he will take my other tower, and then it's G. So, so I played really attack. defensive. Mm -hmm. And then then exactly, and then used my defense on the left for the offense. Dropped the golem in front, and then I got this tower because I had a leg advantage. Wow. Okay. So. Breaking that down, it seems like all you did was you recognize, you know what, I'm going to go same lane as the tower that he's focused on because I can't take a big hit in the opposite lane again. And you decided you can go golem in the back because he would have just punished you at the bridge and you would have been screwed. Uh, so your only choice there was to go Mega Minion in back, Lumberjack in back, then golem at bridge, and that's exactly what ended up working out for you. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. That was a really clear picture of how to handle, you know, th that matchup. Uh, I I'm curious, just before we go into this next replay here against uh, face control, I'm going to pause at the beginning. But before we uh, press play here, you know, quick kind of lightning round rule of thumbs. If you're going against, if your opponent drops a, uh, a, a giant in the back, what do you do? Mm, I will play a golem in the back. Or it depends if I don't have a golem in cycle or I know his deck and if he would punish me, then I play Electro Dragon in the back. Okay. Or Baby Dragon. Golem back, same lane? Yeah, golem uh, uh, always in the same lane. Always same lane. Okay, and if they start out with a golem in the back, do you go golem, same lane, mirror? Or is there any situation you would ever try to punish that bridge with a golem? Or is that always a bad idea? No, I always go uh, in the same lane because to punish is not the best idea because it's not... 100% possible. The only situations where I go in the other lane, which is really important, is when it's like, I don't know, like still 30 seconds and he's dropping a golem in the back. Then I go mm -hmm. offensive golem on the other side and pushing completely in the other lane because he's slow on elixir and I can maybe get his tower and then the time is done so his golem is not even getting to my tower. Absolutely. But normally yep. at the start of the game, I will drop it in this. Okay, and the last question before we press play here is Lava Hound. They drop a Lava Hound in the back. What are you doing? Also in the same lane. Then same I would drop, lane. but probably against Lavon because right now there are a lot of players with double or triple dragon. I would drop an Ice Wizard, Electro Dragon, Mega Minion, or Baby Dragon in the back um, because uh, it's really hard if you drop before a golem, golem and yes, okay, yeah, before the golem the, instead of dropping a golem because they have like an Inferno Dragon, for example, behind the Lavon, and then a golem would not be that good. So maybe I try to make an Elixir advantage with the defense just with dropping first an Electro Ring or Ice with it. Okay, cool. All right, let's press play on this one. And this time we're watching from your point of view. Break down uh, this matchup for us. Yeah. So at the beginning, as always, I waited a bit, but then really fast I realized that he's playing Inferno Tower Bait. And then this matchup, I know that pushing with the Golem is not the best idea because you really need to destroy him with your backup and you can also make a lot of damage just with a baby dragon but you will also see in this match so I started to just defend again and yeah predicted here his minor on the left and then uh, I realized yeah he needs to still needs to defend this so I dropped a, a electro dragon in, at the bridge because I also had the rage from the lumberjack and wow, he had problems okay. to drop the minion hot so yeah I got a bit damage with the baby dragon and the electro dragon just that was a really smart e drag it. there. I'm not sure if I would have had the wherewithal to do that. <laughs> yeah, and then I saw that the barbarian, bar uh, the goblin barrier is in normal, like normal place at the tower, so I could nade it to the king, which was really good because the king activation in this matchup is really important. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, he pressured with princess, so I just re reacted with the mega minion, and then yeah, I keep playing cards defensive with dragons in the back or react, just react to him. Now in a matchup like this, are you are you totally happy if you get out of single elixir time, like even in damage or even a little bit below? Yeah, definitely. Like cool. if I get out of single elixir without getting that much damage, it's really good in this matchup. Yeah. And here you also yeah. see the rage barbarian getting two hits. Yeah, you're really, really benefiting from situation. the lumberjack rage. Yeah, exactly. Before with the e dragon and the baby dragon, now with the barbarian barrel. Yeah. And you said that the difference between you and Royal was that Royal plays especially more, very more conservatively, especially in single elixir time. So my next question for you was going to be, do you think a rule of thumb for Golem players is just get through single elixir time alive? But it sounds like you might disagree with that because you are, you will play Golem in, in single elixir time. Yeah, but that's a difference. Okay. Um, Royal is also playing Golem in single elixir, but he's in general playing more defensive like he would also drop a golem if he has three or four or five elixir advantage in single elixir but in general when 
he has not a perfect card to play or he knows he needs a card for enemy and cycle, he's always waiting. And that's something he's doing really, really good, but I also try to learn a bit because uh, to playing this defensive is in some situations really important because then you have like the perfect cards and cycles. So it's really important to remember what the enemy played in something like this. Okay. And there you just ignore that Goblin Barrel. You're, you actually have the luxury to do that because you have the activated King Tower. Now, if you didn't have the King Tower activated there, would you still ignore that Goblin Barrel? No, then probably not. That's okay. why the King Tower activation was so important. And then the Mega Minion got like so many hits that <laughs> oh, the power yeah. was so low. Then I had Lightning for the Tower. And Forget yeah, it. Then, Game oh, over. It, <laughs> yeah, it was it was nearly flawless, this match. This match was really, really good. Um, and there you see how you can like destroy also Normally a not that good matchup with playing really defensive. Yeah, absolutely. Well, those are really fantastic breakdowns. I don't. I, I moved away from replays here on the channel for uh, for a large you know part of my my content. However, you can see the value sometimes when you have like a really really good pro player, especially a, a deck master like Flobby, just breaking down tough matchups like these guys. Uh, so now I want to both. Are you cool with doing one more live, Flobby? Or yeah, for sure. For All right, sure. awesome. Well, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna edit out downtime. You can search and then I'll play. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, be right back with you guys. Okay, I have a match. Perfect. Okay, sounds good. Okay, we're in a match. That was a long wait, guys, but here you go. Uh, check out the guy we just played. It's Rad. He's in first place right now in the world. Good for you, yeah. Rad. He's actually a, a CRL Asia Pro, too. But anyway, we're into a match against uh, D Demar or Demar. <laughs> yeah, so, Demar. <laughs> Demar. All right. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, I start with a bumper, and then he dropped the main. So I will just react to him, and then let's find out what he's playing. Oh, the last time I had Royal on, he said that he now drops his golem in the back corner instead of behind the King Tower. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, maybe he does that because NATO is pretty solid in this meter. Okay. Especially with Ice Wizard, and if you drop it in the corner, it's harder for the enemy to um, NATO the golem to the King Tower. So yes. now I have a NATO for the Hawk, so that's a really good start, and I think also a pretty good matchup. He's probably playing with E-Dragon, uh, E-Dragon Cycle deck, which is possible. Yeah. Which would, would be good because I also have Lightning. So yeah, I will play a bit defensive and sing elixir right now, and then I will probably drop a golem um, and build a bit, bit a big push. Yeah, maybe a couple rules of thumbs when going against hog decks, because hog decks are still really really popular, especially in in like you know the three to five thousand trophy range. So, is it is it one of those? Just kind of give us a template for going against hog decks. Okay, so first I drop the golem right now because he played a poison and I have a little elixir advantage. Oh, he's playing Pekka. What? Oh, <laughs> okay, that okay. changes everything. Um, in general, really important is to um, nato the first hawk to the king, or like to try to nato a hawk to the king, which is like really solid as a play. Mm -hmm. And then, in general, like at one point, you need to like let one hawk just let it go for okay. the tower, because if the king tower is activated, it's not doing that much damage. And then you can build a big push on the other side, and he can just take some damage on the um, yeah. On the other side. I got you. Okay, so activate King Tower and then let a hog push go uh, when you can cash in for a huge golem push. Gotcha. Exactly. All That's right. like what I nearly do always against. Okay. So here we go. This time you have to defend because he has a lot of supporting troops and you do a good job doing so. Bar Barrel's going to yeah. stop that Ice Spirit and the Ice Whiz and now it, it might be a good opportunity to drop another golem. Yes, exactly. It's also good because he dro just dropped the Ice Whiz in the bag. So the ice boost is like uh, making my push slower, so I can build a bigger push, which is not yeah, good. right. Not bad. Yeah, you're pushing into okay. the packet again, though, which is. So now it's what I said. Like yeah, I would completely ignore the sock. I would okay. just let it go, and we'll completely go in on the other side. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> sort of a template here. And so he now... drops that poison. Ice boost is out of the poison. Go ahead. Sorry. I have so much elixir that I will actually build a push in the other lane with golem. Where I have like uh, Mega Minion and um, a Baby Dragon in, in, in offense also. And now he just has a Pekka. He's not that much elixir. The poison comes really late. The Pekka is nearly down. And now I can also drop a Lumberjack in the back. And he has. It will be really that's tough it. for him to defend. Wow. Uh, probably that's it, yeah. Why did you switch lanes? Is it because you just you just had that, that, that sense that he was using too much elixir on defense? Yes, exactly. Okay. He, had, he used too much on the right. Um, and uh, I, I had so much elixir that I dropped on the other lane because I still had pressure on the other lane because there were still some troops, so he needed to react to that. And then I can drop on the other lane and have like two big pushes, and then yeah, he can't defend both. That was a beast mode push, man. I loved it. All right, so I have the deck selected. 
I actually copied this deck too from that rad guy, guys. I'm gonna try that out later. Uh, but okay, I have the deck ready. I'm gonna go in. I'm about, you know, a thousand plus trophies below you, Floppy, but I'm into a match, so guide me. Guide me, Sensei. Yes. All right, <laughs> so I have NATO Baby Dragon Mega Minions, so I guess I'm just gonna chill. Uh, yes. Golem, sorry. Uh, yeah. So Mega Minion, ooh. Same. Baby Dragon or Mega Minion in the back. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mostly dropped the baby dragon because uh, the Mega Minion is not that tanky and Should uh, I Lumberjack yeah. or? Um, or just no, Mega I would Minion just wait. Yeah. Yeah, Mega Minion, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna bar barrel that. Perfect. Nice. Now the princess also died. Should I, should so... I Lumberjack here or no? Mm, no, I would not. I would drop a golem in the back. Okay. Because he used a lot of the uh, elixir, he also used uh, the knight, mm -hmm. and now exactly the ice wizard is perfect because you know that he would do so too much damage. I would ignore that. Yeah. The the, the the goblin barrel, because now he used so much elixir that he will he has nearly nothing to so defend right now. Should I baby right dragon now. or lumberjack or should I, I'm gonna baby uh, baby dragon take the princess? Yeah. No. No. I would drop the baby dragon on the right. Okay. Then uh, NATO, do you have together. a nato? Yeah. yeah. Every everything together. Yeah. I'm just gonna take care of this. Is this? I don't know if this is a mistake. Yeah, but... it's perfect. Okay. No, 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 it's good. It's good because you need to take care at one point. Can I mega and, minion here uh, or lumberjack? No. Okay. No, I would. Uh, I would uh, play defensive right now. Okay. You got a lot of damage. She still needs to commit, and now you can drop an offensive mega minion on the knight when the knight is on the bridge. Okay. And I don't have any answer right now in hand to a goblin barrel except for a lumberjack. So. Yeah, but you can drop a fast lumberjack. But he, yeah. he, he would take care of the. Yeah. Okay. So then you can drop a baby dragon probably on the princess. Uh, okay. He still needs to commit to defend this mega minion. And uh, now you can. Golem? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have the Ice Wiz ready to do the same thing. I have my bar barrel, that's fine. Perfect. That was exactly. a bad no. bar barrel. Yep. Yes, that's exactly why you uh, played the golem in the situation because you had the bar barrel in cycle and you yep. were able to defend the, the goblin barrel. And now we can just play baby dragon, lumberjack behind the golem. Sure, sure. Yeah, this and then be... cycle to the cycle to the next bar barrel, play it on the princess, and then yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, he has NATO rocket. Oh, <laughs> that actually changed the situation a bit. Little but bit. the golem is get getting the to the tower. Yeah. Yeah, and the lightning should be enough. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll safe lightning and boom, and this. Perfect. And a perfect NATO just one hit from the, the goblin. No big deal, um, Slobby. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> well, Perfect. I like that. You know, this uh, this is why I love these uh, these kind of coaching. At least doing one of these per video because there was actually a couple situations that I think I would have like I would have continued supporting that golem push had you not told me to stop. You know, when I had that baby yeah. dragon, that very first one. Yep, exactly. And that was because, it, why you told me to stop because I just I w it would have been an overcommitment on my part. Yeah, probably it was an overcommitment. Like I had the feeling that he has like then three elixir at one point, and if you would drop a lumberjack, he can kite with the goblin gang, and then you trade four for three. Like at one time, it was just a feeling that yeah. it was not would not be a good deal for you. So yeah. Okay. Well, hey, Floppy, thank you so much for coming back on the channel. I really love this video. I had a good feeling about it, and I was right, man. It was a pleasure having you on. Any uh, shout-outs or anything before we let you go? Obviously, you're still streaming, and uh, anything else we need to know about? Shout-outs for you inviting me, and uh, nice. yeah, I would be uh, happy to come back again. So yeah, thanks for the invite. Fantastic, Flobby. Well, I'll include a link to Flobby's Twitter, his Twitch, and his player profile, thanks to StatsRail.com, in the description below. I want to thank you guys for hanging in there till the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout-out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thanks, guys, and as always, take care, guys.